a little bit more excitement than that. You guys know who's coming to the stage. So I'm here to introduce Justin Kahn. Justin Kahn is the founder of Justin TV. I don't know if you guys ever watched it, but it was pretty awesome. Um, he also founded several other companies, including Social Cam, Twitch, which you'll hear a lot more about. Um, and his very first endeavor was Kiko. It was the very first Ajax calendar in the world. So pretty cool stuff. So Justin has forged what I think has been an incredible line between traditional media and content created media by consumers. He's been the leader in this. He is the, the consummate entrepreneur, a relentless innovator, and a friend of Startup Grind. Please join me in welcoming Justin Kahn to the stage. Thanks. Hello. Hello. Hi, guys. So I see about half of you have already gone to lunch. Nice. <laughs> Well, we're going to start, Justin, with something a little less conventional. Um, typically, when guests come out here, we immediately jump in and start talking about your companies, your earnings, et cetera, et cetera. But something about this just captivated me. It was your art project at Burning Man. It's called? Yeah, Titanic's End. you got a picture up there. That's an early prototype. It looks a lot better in, in person. In person. But um, yeah, we made a giant iceberg that moved around the playa. So. It was cold inside, built it around a freezer truck. You go inside and um, relax in the heat. Yeah. So you're heat. pretty popular at Burning Man, I, I take it. Yeah, I think it was, it was pretty cool. It was fun to build. You know, mm -hmm. built it, uh, we welded this frame together on the truck ourselves and kind of built the whole thing. Uh, me and a, an architect friend of, of mine, and about, we probably had about 100 volunteers on the project wow. over the uh, couple months leading up. So we, we built it and um, had a lot of fun with it. Pretty cool. And so where is it now? It's uh, parked in Oakland, disassembled. In Oakland. <laughs> yeah. It takes so no about... Ch no I chance wanted, of us having a party there. I wanted to use, par use it for parties and stuff, but it, it takes like a full day, like four people, like 10 hours to assemble and like 10 hours to disassemble. So there hasn't really been the motivation to I got that. put it back together. Well, maybe we can get some volunteers in the audience and we can all come yeah, in. Yeah, if anyone wants to work on an art car, I need, I need labor. I'll pay you nothing, but... <laughs> No, but seriously, I'd love to have you volunteer. <laughs> so I am finding there seems to be like this connection between burning man or being a burner and entrepreneurship. Do you see a connection there at all? Uh, well, lots of my friends who go to burning man are entrepreneurs and mm -hmm. um, I was introduced to it by a few uh, YC entrepreneur friends of mine. Um, but I, I mean, I think that's just like you know, people who like doing interesting and novel things and experiencing new things, oftentimes they're attracted, some of them are attracted to founding companies and some of them are attracted to going to Burning Man and there's some overlap between them. Absolutely, well that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's so as we know, you know, you've started many, many companies successfully, <laughs> um, which, you know, that's a tag on the end that not a lot of people can say. Um, so you're kind of like the Yoda, if you will, of startups. I think Yoda's a bit older than I am. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> minus the age. I mean, the wisdom, just the wisdom, minus the age. So out of all of your endeavors, what would you say made Twitch the most, the different, the most different out of all of them? Well, uh, with Twitch, I really can't take that much credit for it as uh, I grew out of this company that we'd started, Justin TV, mm -hmm. which started off as us trying to make our own live video reality TV show. Um, which wasn't that interesting ultimately, so we had to figure out other things to do. And uh, Twitch was one of them. My co-founder, Emmett, really identified that gaming was the only, like none of us actually used Justin TV. So we weren't very good at like making this product that we you know, were ourselves users of. And, and we weren't very good at collecting feedback, but the only thing that um, any of us really did use was Emmett really loved the gaming content. He loved watching the Star, like StarCraft. Uh, which was, you know, they were just coming out with a second version of StarCraft. And so he came and said to the rest of us, hey, this is something that we should work on and uh, convinced us and we kind of, well, the first response was like, people watching video games, is that really a thing? Um, yeah, it, it, it's real. I and, mean, I can tell you it's real. So we, so, uh, he, we kind of created a team to, to work on that and I think the thing that really made it successful was um, a couple things. I mean, really identified that uh, 
in order to attract an audience, we needed to attract the broadcasters people wanted to watch, so they were the main focus of you know, who we talked to. And we really just talked to them, figured out what would make them either come onto our site and start streaming if they weren't already, or stream more, and um, tried to build those things to, to attract them. And it was just this iteration cycle towards this you know, kind of monthly growth goal. Mm -hmm. um, and once the ball started rolling, it just like kept rolling. You know, it was really a process of just saying, "Hey, doing these interviews of like, what do you, you know, what do you do? Like, what's your, what's your life like? What do you want? You know, what do you want out of Twitch? How can we make it better for you?" And then building those things. So looking at Twitch, by the way, he is um, one of the partners over at YC. So everyone, don't chase him out of the building pitching to him. But um, so, if, say for instance, if an entrepreneur came before you today and pitch Justin TV, what would you say to them? That's actually something that I worry about a lot because I'd probably <laughs> say that's a terrible idea and that's crazy and you should never start that company. Um, which lots of people told us incidentally. Right. Uh, but I think that like, you know, I, I, at the early stages, it's, it's like sometimes these ideas that are like completely crazy don't really matter as much as like getting started building something and then eventually you know if you have enough tenacity and you stick with it and you're smart enough you kind of figure out something that does work um, so you know at YC we really look for teams you know we try to like think about the founders and think you know are they displaying some sort of insight into this market do they have like a complementary skill sets are they like gonna work hard on this and like continue on with this thing even in that trough of sorrow when no one's using your product mm -hmm. and um, you know, because it's really, really hard to identify, like, is this idea going to work or not? You know, I, I'd say out of the top five or six YC companies by size, you know, half of them, or more than half, pro probably like 75% were kind of pivots from what the original the thing original was. The original idea was. So given that you've had so much success, even going back to Kiko, the calendar, the Ajax calendar that you guys built, so much success with actually being able to exit or sell your company, um, what would you say 10 years ago you were thinking when you said, hey, we've got to offload Kiko? What were you thinking? Well, I was thinking I hate, I hate startups. Besides, um, <laughs> <laughs> we've basically been working on this calendar. We saw Gmail come out in 2004, and we said, wow, this is really cool. Someone should build like a calendar version, you know, accompaniment program, right? Like a website that like also did like an online calendar and a very an kind of elegant and um, functional UI. Um, and so we started building that, but we really didn't know anything about calendars because we were college students. Like I only had class on Monday and Wednesday, and I could remember that. <laughs> and so I, um, we didn't really know what we were building, but because we were like, you know, had some ideas about how like applications would be, you know, done on the web and in JavaScript, that was kind of a radical idea at the time. Um, we got into Y Combinator in the very first class, so we had some small amount of funding, and we worked on it, and then we continued working on it for a year, and Google Calendar came out with, now I can admit, what was effectively a much better product, <laughs> and also came with your email, which is you know, how you really want to use your calendar, it turns out. And so you know, we didn't really get any traction, we were pretty discouraged, we were very distractible, and so by the time that like, a year had rolled around, we were basically running out of money, and we were like, just how do we extricate ourselves from this kind of situation and commitments to our investors. We raised not a lot, like $70,000. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I felt bad if we had, I would have felt terrible about losing that. And so we, I had this idea, I actually seen another company do it, but I had this idea of like, like why don't we just sell the company on eBay? Or like try, what's the downside? <laughs> um, so we put this auction up and um, got some press around it, like early TechCrunch wrote about it and it was on Reddit. Reddit at that time was like much more technology focused. Mm -hmm. And then it, um, it uh, you know, started, we got a bid for $50,000. I was ecstatic. And then uh, the morning of, I remember I was just refreshing the auction and like, we kept getting higher and higher bids and every time it would jump up from like 50,000 to like 100 to 113 to 150, 200, and then like 258. And, and know, that was the that final was selling yeah. price, 258? Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. So that was, yeah, that was pretty good for us. I mean, it was just two of us, you know, mm -hmm. we had just, graduated from college a year before, and so we felt like, hey, we discovered a new business model. <laughs> Sell your company on eBay, yeah. that's it. So the question now becomes, because you've successfully exited and been so successful in, in making money, if you will, from your endeavors, um, you wrote a blog 
instructing entrepreneurs the best way or when to know how they should sell their company. Um, looking back at what you did 10 years ago, how does that advice apply then, today, and what advice would you give entrepreneurs about stepping out to sell their companies? Well, I, I wrote this blog post that was, I think, popular probably because it was honest, but about selling your company, but it wasn't really, wasn't really about when to sell your company, because I don't think I actually know. It's really up to, you know, that's up to every individual. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if you look at Twitch, well, Twitch, uh, we sold it, and it was, I think, very excellent outcome. Um, I would say $970 million <laughs> is quite an excellent outcome. Um, you know, but when we sold it, it was 55 million monthly uniques, and I think last month the team announced, I don't work at Amazon anymore, but the team announced the 100 million MAU. Wow. Uh, so the sites continue to grow and really be a popular, you know, cultural force. Um, so I don't know if I'm the best, like, you know, we're the best <laughs> at market timing or whatever, but I think that, uh, you know, what I wrote about was really about how to think about selling your company, what the actual process and mechanics of selling your company are, because I know that all the times that I went through, I was, you know, kind of flying blind and um, getting a little bit, I thought, it would, at this point, YC has so many companies, we funded over, uh, I think over 800 companies now, mm -hmm. that uh, there's all, always companies in acquisition talks who need some advice and, and kind of guidance around the process. And so, you know, I'm getting asked multiple times a week, oh, how do you think about this? And how, how do you think about, you know, this process? And, mm -hmm. Um, so I wanted to kind of write down the common threads and, and share them. So what do you think are the unique identifiers, or if I should say metrics, that a startup would say, yeah, these are the target things that we should be focused on if we're even interested in entering talks? Well, I think the first company. thing is that you just, like, the best way to sell your company for, like, a lot of money is to actually have a good company. And the thing that you need to think about <laughs> when having a good company is, like, it's completely, it, selling your company or whatever is, like, completely irrelevant to that, right? Like you really just need to think about how do I make a product that people like and then there's some way of like making money from that and how do I recruit like the best talent mm -hmm. and retain them for my company? Mm -hmm. And those are basically the two things that, that matter the most. And you'll never be in the position to, for people actually want to buy your company if you, if you don't do those things. Right. Um, so I think a lot of people, you know, I, I, I was at this panel um, about selling your company mm -hmm. a couple months ago and you know, I looked around the room and all those founders were not people who were in the position to like be selling their company. They're all like really early, early stage founders and I'm, you know, the whole panel could have just been me saying, hey, go back to work on your company and like build a product. <laughs> right. So I'd say that advice is actually mostly irrelevant for probably most people at most times. And in your blog, you actually said that if, if entrepreneurs think that fundraising is difficult, acquisition is much, much harder. Yeah, I think that like it's just, very distracting and it saps your will to like continue, right? Because the entire time you've been working on your company, you're like grinding it out and you have no money. You know, you're, for me, I was like mostly doing it, I was mostly sticking with it, I think, because one, my co-founders were there and like I wanted to, working with them was great and they like supported me when I wasn't feeling good about the company. Um, but also the second thing is like, I had like a lot of ego tied up in the company, mm -hmm. right? Like I, all my friends went and became like, hedge fund managers and mm -hmm. consultants and lawyers and they're all making bank and I was like well at least I control my own destiny right you know like <laughs> I started this company right. and this is you know where that was my like you know my whole identity was wrapped up in that so to say oh like we failed that was like not something that we were going to I couldn't imagine right like I couldn't have mm -hmm. comprehended that and so we would just kept, keep kept going and and um I think that like when you start talking about selling a company or, or a company you know, wants to buy you, they, and, and you start thinking it's real and maybe they throw out like numbers, then you start thinking about how much money you're gonna have and like what your lifestyle is, like instead of like spending seven days a week working, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe I can spend five days a week working and like work 30 hours a week and like <laughs> also take weekend trips to, you know, Mexico or the Caribbean or wherever I want and like right. have a, like a nice life right. instead of what I'm doing right now. Um, and that's like, that's like insidious because it, it saps your will to continue. And so it, it starts removing your optionality, right? And, and you start being like less and less willing actually by going through the process to like say, no, I'm gonna continue going and like keep building my company. You know, BizStone last night talked about the very subject of selling your company. And um, he, he said that, you know, he pointed out three things that he felt 
um, you should start looking at if you're an entrepreneur, if you want to sell your company. And the, one, the last of the three was that the offer is substantially greater than anything that you could have ever imagined receiving as an offer. And you know, of course, not just a verbal offer, but something that's actually written. So would you agree if, you know, if someone just you know, comes and says, hey, I want to offer you today $500 million for this, sell the company? Would you? I mean, I think that's up to every <coughs> individual, Excuse right? Me. Like, I think mm -hmm. that like the best entrepreneurs in the valley said no. Like, right. Zuck said, you know, no. When you got a billion dollar offer, or uh, Evan from Snapchat, you know, is a no to many offers. And I think that that's that's the, um, you know, so it's it's different. I mean, if someone offered me five hundred million dollars for a company that I, I mean, I don't have a company right now, but let's say they offered it for JustinCon.com, I'd probably say right. yes. <laughs> You'd say yes. But, you know, any, but bear in mind that, like, anyone can, like, say anything. And mm -hmm. just because someone, like, says something, like, I'm going to offer you X for your, your company doesn't mean that that's a real offer or that that's going to actually materialize. Mm -hmm. So there's some, like, credibility. So you're you have saying to that be, before you even go further, you want to make sure that you have something in writing. Um, well, it's not just, I mean, someone can, anyone can write anything, too. Right. You know, it, do, it doesn't mean that it's, it's uh, real. I mean, I think there are, those things don't usually come out of the blue. There's usually some relationship you have with the, you know, the other company or potential acquirers or whatever beforehand, and you can use that to judge the, like, credibility. Mm -hmm. you know. That's pretty awesome. So Justin's, Justin TV seems to be, like, this really great launch pad, if you will, for a lot of really amazing products and services. <laughs> What is next to come from, you know, the background of Justin TV? What can well, you I mean, envision? I, th I think that the cool thing about uh, the reason why there's so many, you know, products that came out of Justin TV, like Social Cam and Twitch, um, was that, you know, we had a lot of very talented people um, working there, and um, we'd kind of assembled a very talented team, and we were working on, like, some things that, you know, probably weren't that great. Uh, but at the end of the day, when we unlocked that talent to like work on new projects, they, you know, I think the results kind of spoke for themselves. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's lots of things that are up and coming. I think that um, Zero Cater, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that company. That's a you know growing company that started by an alumni of Justin TV. My one of my co-founders, um, Kyle, started this company. That's a self-driving car company. That was just had a big profile in Inc. Magazine, but they're you know, building crews, which is this, mm -hmm. it's pretty cool technology, you know. Um, and so I think, I think there's, you know, people from Justin TV will go on to do many amazing, amazing things. things. How much do you see yourself involved? Uh, well, you know, I, I try to invest in all of them. Right. First. Well, I'm sure this, they appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, well, I have this, like, massive fear of missing out. If it's, like, my friend and they, like, mm -hmm. actually create a successful company and I didn't invest in it, then I'll, like, feel horrible. So, like, that's, that's my investment philosophy thesis. So how, how bad I'll feel if they're successful. <laughs> wow, you're such a great friend, aren't you? <laughs> just kidding, just a joke. Um, so going back to you famously saying that, you know, if Justin TV could succeed, that it, no one else has an excuse because you felt like it was a really terrible idea. Um, and going back to that, and looking now, hindsight of all, like you said, all the amazing things that have come as a byproduct of Justin TV. Um, how, what would you say to encourage entrepreneurs even to st stay the course with something that you or they or I may think is a really terrible idea? Well, I, th I think that um, one thing I was talking about with someone earlier this morning was um, that you know, there's this idea of like failing fast, but, but that doesn't really mean that means like learning fast, really. It doesn't mean like you want your company to fail. It means you want the, if you want to get your product out there, figure out what's not working, and like iterate on it, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of people confuse the two things. Like with Justin TV, we had like a it was a bad idea and it was a terrible idea, and I think it is the proof that if like we could be successful, literally anyone can be successful on the <laughs> internet. But um, the thing is like we didn't just stay with it. It was clear when we launched the show like it wasn't that interesting. Like we weren't very entertaining. You said you watched it, but yes. you probably only watched it like once. Like, maybe, maybe twice. Yeah. So possibly it, three times. Yeah. Well, that's not creepy at all. <laughs> but um, the you know when we launched our original idea it was us tr making our own reality TV show and we're like not that funny. We're not that entertaining. We were on our laptops like programming the site most of the time, and so <laughs> you know the, the the 
thing that we did was we didn't like wind down the company after that didn't work. We like tried to figure out what part, aspects of it were working and then iterate on it like you know from there. And so we you know ended up making a platform for anyone to create their own live streams. And that turned into various other video products like Social Cam and Twitch by observing user behavior that happened on the site. So you know I think you have to you don't want to just blindly continue doing what you've been doing if it's not working, but you want to learn from your experience and continue, you know, going, like, you know, but don't give up. Don't give up on the, long, like, the whole journey. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, I really do believe that, like, anyone can be successful building a company on the internet if they just are persistent enough and, like, observe what's, you know, like, learn from their experiences. Because Absolutely. we, you know, I'm not a very good programmer. I'm actually, I told you I'm a reverse engineer, yeah, so yeah, we're a, in the same company. I'm a bad programmer, actually. <laughs> um, I've been told that many times. And, uh, you know, I'm not a very good manager. I think I'm, like, I just am okay. But, like, really what I did was, like, find a lot of smart people to work with, and then we continued, you know, trying different things. And, um, I don't know, over a long period of time, people see Twitch and, you know, it really spun off the website as its own thing in 2011, but, you know, we'd been working in startups for 10 years. So, right. Yeah. So it wasn't necessarily an overnight success like some no. of the no. other things we see. Well, you know, I, I think that, you know, when you see an entrepreneur such as yourself who's achieved so much and accomplished so much, it's always great to see how they think about the broader world in general and not just entrepreneurship. Um, and so it... A funny question, but I still think very telling. Um, if there were a zombie apocalypse, you know, just, you know, we're just saying hypothetically, if there were a zombie apocalypse, you being an entrepreneur, what would be the two things you would say? <laughs> the two things I would say, I mean, I, I guess I'd have to say that the, f the first would probably, I'm getting married, so my fiance. Yeah, I'm sure she appreciates that, yeah. that. I'm saying it, you know, it's <laughs> probably recorded, so. I just want people to know that. Um, and then, I mean, I watch Walking Dead, I want Rick on my team. You want Rick on your team. But, uh, you know, if I had to save a thing, I'd probably, um, I'd probably just download like 10 terabytes of Twitch Hearthstone video to a hard drive and then watch it until I ran out of food. <laughs> Well, yeah. we're glad that you have a solid plan. I guess the rest <laughs> of us, you know, have to get to work on ours. Yeah. So we just thank you so much, Justin, sure. for coming today and sharing with us. It's really been phenomenal. All right. Thank thanks you very so much. much.